I want to show you in this video is um, to create uh, various different layouts and placing them on sheets, uh, maybe for some sort of architectural design. Perhaps you're designing a house for a homeowner. I've got some example uh, files here that I'm able to show you. So we've got four different houses here. Uh, so all of these houses are the same. I've actually created these as a group. I did not use design options. I, I've not covered that in this video. I've just duplicated them. But just to be aware, there is something called design options which can perform similar, but it doesn't cover in this video. So essentially what I've done, I've created a group of the existing house. So this is just the existing semi-detached home here. Um, and what we've done is proposed an extension onto the back. And each of these extensions varies in a slightly different way. They're all more or less the same outside, but internally the layouts are different. So what we've actually done with these is place them onto sheets that can be sent by the architect or designer to the client. So we've got floor plans. So uh, we've placed uh, the first three options on a floor plan. We've got three different options. You can see the door is in a different place here. Uh, the kitchen is here. Then the door has been moved here in the second option, kind of moving into the room. Uh, and in the third option, uh, it's a bit more of a bespoke design, but maybe some sort of uh, bespoke joinery designed around a dining table and island. And a kitchen and um, so that's essentially your floor plans i've created kind of graphical um uh, elements on these such as creating shadows and turning on sketchy lines as you'll see on these so just a bit more presentable if, if that's how you want your drawing to look when you're sending it to a client uh, and what you might find is a client can actually interpret uh, these type of drawings a lot easier for example if there are shadows it kind of gives a depth to it uh, as well as that, as well as those three designs, we've also cut floor plans using the section box within these. And simply how we do these is within a 3D view, uh, just turn on your section box on the left-hand side here. So I'm just gonna turn it off for now, place these on a sheet. So we can see that our section box is turned on, the drawing doesn't look very clean there. So what we've actually done is just turn on section box. We have all our floor plans uh, duplicated across there. So what I'm actually gonna do is just make sure that it's hidden. So what I'm doing is just uh, pulling down the section box and cutting through the floor plan. Uh, you can decide how, how deep you want it to be. And I actually only wanted um, I only wanted three floor plans to be shown in this particular one because we have a separate sheet created for the four floor plan. The four, uh, floor plan. So turn that off. So what I, I, I'm creating here, uh, when you see the light bulb at the bottom, that's actually uh, hiding uh, elements. So I've hidden the section box. So for example, if I was to leave the section box turned on, it means that you would see the section box. So if I unhide element, let's cancel that, unhide element, uh, you will always see this section box, which we don't want to see it. So what I do is I just select it and type EH. So it still functions, but it just hides itself in the background. So again, I've labeled these options uh, just so maybe a client is able to understand which option they're looking at. These are three different layouts for the same design. I've used phasing, you can see in this first one, it shows the existing uh, building is actually quite grayed out and anything new, uh, I suppose, is more defined by its color as well. And we've used, uh, we've actually used uh, different types of view settings on that. And we've set it as a view template using 3D sketch. So we've just created this view template ourselves. Uh, and that applies across the project. That just brings consistency uh, across your project, I suppose. Uh, so obviously these floor plans and these 3D floor plans uh, are the exact same. So if I delete something here, it is going to delete in the background as well. So if I just get those two side by side. So if I go into my first floor plan here, and I'm just gonna select my dining table, on one of my chairs, and if I zoom out on the right hand side, you can see that chair has actually highlighted in blue. So if I delete that, it's going to delete off both as well, and even the uh, the drawing and the 3D model. Update. So I'm just going to undo that, make sure that goes back in. So that's the floor plan. So I'm going to go back into this uh, 3D view. So that's a cut section through a 3D view. Uh, and what we've actually done here is we've used multi-category tags. Uh, so these tags are intelligent tags. Uh, so as soon as I place a note on something, so for example, if I choose this, uh, what is going to be the breakfast bar, so if I just go to comments, I'm gonna put this in as a breakfast bar. That's what I'm gonna call it. So that's just so the client knows what it is. So I've put in that information. It's attached to, this is just a, a model in place element. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into annotate. I'm gonna to go to multi-category. I'm just gonna hover over that and you can see it actually pulls up that text that I just inputted. The same if I was to hover over any other element, 
Uh, but these elements are just showing question marks. So therefore, the, the properties haven't been filled out, that's all. But if I was to fill them out, they, they, they would, for example. So I could also select the dining table. Um, and I'm just going to call it dining. So it kind of defines the area uh, to the client as well, so that they're able to see these drawings. So I'm going to create similar, hover over that. Just going to pull out dining table and they can see that's the dining area because uh, you i suppose from a, a designer's perspective uh, clients don't always interpret drawings or even 3ds in the same way maybe that the architect or designer does uh, so it can be important to label up certain things that may seem obvious to a designer uh, i think revit lends itself quite well to be able to to make uh, drawings and make your design uh, a lot more uh, i suppose uh, clearer in a way uh, to your 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 clients um, and just communicating your design uh, in a, a lot easier for you, helping you sell your, your design ideas, I suppose. So that's the 3D floor plans. Uh, then I've created outside views. I've turned off the section box, uh, essentially, and we can just see the outside views. Uh, and the only difference in these three is, for example, option one has two windows side by side here and a bigger picture window here. Option two has just a floor to ceiling window. Uh, option three then has a, a much bigger kind of picture window at a, a dining room room area as well. And you can also label these up as well. So I could select that window. Uh, so it's already ha has a comment in there. So I can go to my annotate tab, go to multi category, hover over that particular window, and it says picture window to courtyard. So that's explaining that quite simply. Uh, and if I was to go back into my floor plan, for example, if I was to then go into my floor plan, uh, again, double click into this uh, floor plan, multi-category tag, hover over this same window, you can see that the same note actually comes into that. So picture window to court uh, in there as well. So just pull that in so it doesn't go over the side of the sheet. Uh, and you can actually you can pull that out of the way if you want. So there, that's pointing to that. So essentially the same notation uh, that you've created on one sheet. If you use a multi-category tag, uh, you can use that same notation on another sheet as well. Um, then with uh, what I've actually done here is I've just rotated the floor plan, uh, duplicated it, uh, and just rotated it, uh, and just cut another section box through it here as well. Uh, so again, just giving a different view and using the multi-category tags. I have placed uh, just some photographs here that I found online. Uh, obviously, the, the rights of these photos belong to the particular architect. Um, so just to show a client maybe a reference image, you can drag that image uh, simply onto a sheet. So the way you do that is go to your Insert tab, go to Link Image, and uh, ideally you will have a folder with your images in here. You just select your image uh, and bring it in so, onto the sheet and you can, you can uh, resize it. And I've seen this used in design uh, firms or design practices, just essentially to you know, communicate the concept of maybe uh, this landscape courtyard uh, what we want to do with this is similar to this type of project that another architect has actually produced. So uh, it just gives you a better sense of that. Um, and then what I've done as well is just placed uh, another maybe uh, what might be the architect's more favoured option. Uh, I've gone into this in a bit more detail, for example, showing what might be the fitted bench, uh, kind of showing that as an extruded element. Uh, and the way I've actually created that, and I, I will show you how I created that, that is actually a 3D view. So if we go down to our sheet here, that's actually two separate views. It's a 3D view uh, one and 3D view three. So what I'm actually going to do, I am going to, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to show you how I created that. So what I'm going to do here is perfect. I'm going to go back to my option three. So double click on my option three. I am actually going to delete uh, this particular one. So I'm just going to select that. It's going to press delete on it. So that's gotten rid of that particular view. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I actually created that particular view as well. So I'm going to go back here a few steps. So let's say you start with a cut floor plan on your, your uh, drawing sheet. What I then do is I duplicate that particular floor plan. So this I'm duplicating this 3D floor plan. I know it's this one on the sheet. I'm going to hit duplicate on that. So it comes in here. Uh, it gives it another name, view one, copy three. What I'm actually going to do is go back to my sheet. Now I'm going to drag this particular element. I'm going to place this over my floor plan. So I want to just isolate uh, essentially the, the drawing bench in this. 
So what I'm actually going to do is, so all I want to do is I want to select every single element. So I'm just going to drag that across. I want to then type in EH on the keyboard. That will hide absolutely everything. Turn on your reveal hidden elements and just select exactly what you want to show. I am going to just show that particular bench, unhide elements, and turn off your reveal hidden elements. So there's also a crop box on this. Uh, so I don't want to crop that, there's no need to. So that's the bench down here. It's just to explain it, I suppose, in a bit more uh, of a detailed sense. And then I go into my annotate tab, just get some 2D lines, uh, hidden lines, and I'm actually gonna put them into, uh, set them to hidden lines. And all I do then is just to show it as, I suppose, a separate element. Just drag up one of these lines corner, and it just, uh, I suppose, explains it in a bit more of a diagrammatic way. So just pull up those lines. So that's a, oh, that's a, a line. I'm going to change that to hidden. Yeah, that's a black line. And all I'm going to do then is just copy these to, uh, maybe to each, each corner. Uh, make sure they're nice and tidy on that. That one sits nicely on that one. And then what I'm going to do is actually grab this particular one down here and just place this on this particular corner. And that should sit nicely. Yeah, that tidies up nicely with the edge of that. So that just explains that to the client, I suppose, as it shows them as a separate piece of joinery uh, or a separate design element, uh, essentially. So what I'm going to do is, I think I have some notation on this. I do. So I'm going to go to multi-category tag. It's going to tag this again, and just explains it. Uh, fitted shelving storage bench for or for entertaining. Uh, area in the house as well and then on the left hand side i've taken in some other architects photographs that i've just found online again i don't own the rights to these uh, just the, the, the rights are, are, are with the, the relevant architects uh, just to explain what this kind of bench means in terms of or the different options that they can have such as plain uh, plain maybe timber uh, unpainted or unfinished timber and maybe a dark wood seat uh, and maybe a different type of fixed bench uh, so in the kind of concept just to explain to them uh, and they're they're reading this alongside the concept kind of diagram here as well uh, and i made sure to put some kind of green trees uh, just to show that this is a courtyard that they're actually going to be looking out onto this particular element as well so that's option three that i've shown on that particular sheet and then just to show you option four i've done similar except um, the architect or designer quite liked option four so they placed it uh, separately onto a sheet on its own and again showing some uh, other architects photographs that that they they thought was similar in the type of style that they wanted to achieve uh, as well so again using multi-category tags and just different uh, 3d design elements on this as well so how this actually works in if you go into your modeling environment go into your modeling environment so it's three separate buildings uh, the existing building is modeled as a group so that's just duplicated all the way across uh, if the existing building changes, then these all update, um, and then all of the designs were just modeled separately as well. So again, I will say uh, you can use design options to do something similar like this, uh, but for this particular example, I just want to show it as a duplicated uh, element across there as well. So that's essentially how you might uh, create uh, conceptual uh, design sheets uh, for initial design. Uh, maybe of some sort of uh, design project, whether it's a home extension or a larger project, a uh, commercial project even, uh, but just being able to place them onto sheets uh, and graphically uh, make them a bit more presentable. Uh, and then just finally, to get the consistency across all of the drawings, uh, we have used view templates. So if I select this again, you'll see that the view template is called 3D Sketch, and 3D Sketch has a certain amount of settings against it, such as the shadows are turned on. Um, the sketchy lines are turned on as well. They're both all set to one and set to two for extension. Uh, in terms of lighting, all the lighting is set the same as well, so 30, 60, and 10, and that's across whatever this template has been used. Um, so if I go in here, for example, or if I go in here, these uh, drawings also have that template applied. So it just gives you that consistency uh, across your drawings there as well. Just to keep that in mind that uh, viewing templates or view templates are, are very useful for that type of consistency uh, and you can you can change them to suit your own style or your own practice standard as well so that's essentially those um five or six sheets that we created uh, as part of a building design uh, initial design options thank you very much